This is the fourth part of my lecture on descriptive statistics in which I'm going to be talking about measures of dispersion. A measure of dispersion is a value that quantifies the spread of a distribution or the width, how broad it is. For example, here are two distributions that have got the same central value but different widths. The blue distribution has a much greater spread, a greater width than the yellow distribution. So although they've got the same mode and the same mean, the spread of values is greater for the blue one. That's what we mean by dispersion. Now there are several uh, numbers we could use to measure dispersion. The most obvious is the range, which goes from the smallest to the largest values. There's also something called the interquartile range, where we split the data into four equal parts called quartiles and leave out the first and the last quartile and then the remaining range is called the interquartile range. More important is the variance, the average squared deviation from the mean. In other words, it's the mean square or MS deviation and related to that is the standard deviation which is just the square root of the variance so it's sometimes called the root mean square or RMS deviation so variance and standard deviation are in fact going to be the most important quantities of, uh, that we're going to be discussing they're very important measures of dispersion let's have a look at the range and interquartile range first though here's a frequency distribution and if we ask what its range is, the range has to include all measurements from the smallest to the largest. But we can split the data into quartiles, each containing one quarter of the measurements. So the blue lines here split the data into four regions, each of which have got the same number of measurements. In other words, the same area of yellow blocks. The first quartile here contains a certain number of measurements and the second quartile the same number of measurements, the same area of yellow blocks. The third quartile here and the fourth quartile likewise contain the same number of measurements, the same area of yellow blocks. So those are the four quartiles. To get the interquartile range we throw away the first and the fourth quartile and what's left, including just the middle half of the measurements, is the interquartile range. Let's have a look at that using the bone scan frequency data that we're familiar with. The range from the smallest to the largest in this case is very obvious. It's from 3, the smallest measurement, to 6, the largest. The interquartile range is a bit more problematical. There were 10 measurements here, so each quartile is going to contain a quarter of the measurements or two and a half measurements. Well, we can't have half a measurement. So if we're going to discard the top and bottom quartiles, let's just discard the first two and the last two measurements. So if we get rid of this three and this four, and two of these sixes, then we're left with an interquartile range that goes from four to six. So in this case, you see that the interquartile range is not very different from the total range. The standard deviation or RMS devi deviation about the, the mean is a bit more complicated. We'll see how to calculate that in a moment, but you can see that all of these measures are a measure of dispersion, the width of the distribution. There is a recipe to calculate standard deviation as follows. First of all, you calculate the mean of all the values. Then you subtract the mean from each individual value, which gives a deviation of that value from the mean. Then you square each of these deviations. Note that uh, even if the deviations themselves are negative, the squared deviation will always be positive, because if you square a neg negative number, it comes out positive. Then we add up all these squared deviations and divide by the number of values. That gives us the mean squared deviation, or the average squared deviation, if you like. And that's given the special name of variance, the mean squared deviation. When we take the square root of the variance, we get what is called the standard deviation, or root mean squared deviation. So let's apply that to our example to calculate the standard deviation of our bone scan data. Here we've got the number of scans done on each day, 
and the recipe says that we first have to calculate the mean. Well, we've already done that. We know the mean is 5. Then we have to subtract the mean from each of those values. So 6 take away 5 leaves 1. That's the deviation of the first measurement from the mean. 1 means it's 1 above the mean. The second measurement of 4 take away 5 gives us minus 1. The minus indicating that it's less than the mean. 4 is less than the mean of 5. When we take the mean away from 6, we get 1. We take the mean away from 4, we get another minus 1, and so on. Note that if we add up all those deviations, the total should come to 0. Um, that has to be the case because we've got just as many measurements above the mean as below the mean. That's how the mean was defined. Um, so we can't use the total deviation or the average deviation from the mean as a measure of the dispersion of the data because the average deviation is always going to be zero by definition. We have positive and negative values balancing each other out. But the recipe says that we have to square those deviations. 1 squared means 1 times 1, which is 1. Minus 1 squared means minus 1 times minus 1. When you multiply a negative number by a negative number, you get a positive. So minus 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 1 squared is 1. A minus 2 squared means minus 2 times minus 2, which means you multiplying a negative by a negative, once again you get a positive and you get plus 4. And so on, squaring all those deviations. When we add all those up, the sum of the square deviation comes to 12. Then the recipe says that we take the number of measurements, 10, and divide the sum of the square deviations by the number of measurements to give the mean square deviation. 12 divided by 10 is 1.2, and that's what we call the variance. Then the final step is to calculate the standard deviation by taking the square root of the variance. The square root of 1.2 is 1.1. So we have a variance of 1.2 and a standard deviation of 1.1 as measures of dispersion for this particular data. Notice that by squaring the deviations, we got a mean squared deviation that was non-zero. That's why we can use variance or standard deviation as a measure of dispersion, but we can't use the mean deviation before we square them because that is always going to cancel out the positives and negatives. So, how do we interpret the standard deviation? Well, as I said, it's a measure of how far away from the mean the measurements are on average. Here is a distribution where all the measurements are close to the mean. The standard deviation is going to be quite small. But here's a deviation where the measurements are widely spread about the mean. It's going to have a large standard deviation. So you can see why we use this as a measure of dispersion, a measure of the spread of the data. Now, we already saw the formula for calculating mean. There's a similar formula for calculating variance. It's the mean squared deviation, and here you see the formula sigma xi minus m squared divided by n for the variance. In some textbooks, you'll see an alternative shortcut formula, which has the variance as sigma xi squared over n minus m squared. The full formula says you subtract the mean from each measurement before you square them. The shortcut formula says you can square the measurements without subtracting the mean and then subtract the mean squared afterwards. The two formulas should both give the same result. Once we've got the variance, we can calculate the standard deviation by taking the square root of the variance. That's why it's called the root mean square deviation. And I'll use the symbol S for standard deviation is the square root of v, v for variance. But often in textbooks you'll see um, that they don't use the symbol v for variance, they just put s squared for variance. Uh, but obviously it means the same thing. 
Well, how do we interpret that rather complicated formula? Here is the same formula. Let's take it to bits one term at a time. Xi are the individual measurements. X1, X2, X3 are the measurements. The formula says we subtract the mean, m, from each measurement. That gives us the deviation from the mean, how far above or below each measurement is compared with the mean. And then we square that deviation. Then the summation says we add up all those squared deviations and then we divide by n. That's a way of calculating the average or the mean. So it gives us the average or the mean squared deviation. And that's the definition of variance, the mean squared deviation from the mean. So you see each term of the formula can be interpreted in the same way as steps in the recipe. The standard deviation is just the square root of that, just says we take the square root of the variance. That's why it's called the root mean squared deviation. Let's do the same thing using our um, bone scan data again. We've got the same measurements as before with 10 measurements and a mean of 5. If we call those our xi values, 6, 4, 6, 4, 3 and so on, then the first thing we have to do is to subtract the mean from each measurement. So here is xi minus m, the value minus the mean. 6 minus 5 is 1, 4 minus 5 is minus 1, and so on. Then the formula says we have to square those. So 1 squared is 1, minus 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 squared is 1, minus 2 squared is 4, and so on. Then the formula says we sum all those up. That gives us 12 for the sum of all the squares. And then we have to divide by n. n is 10, so 12 over 10 gives us 1.2. That is the variance. The standard deviation is then just the square root of the variance. The square root of 1.2 is 1.1, exactly as we had before. Now, if we want to do the same thing using histogram data, remember for the mean we had a formula for the mean that included the frequency of the measurements. Here's exactly the equivalent formula for standard deviation. It says that the variance is the sum of fi times xi minus m squared over sum of fi. So in this case we know that the mean is 5. From the histogram we have the values of number of bone scans a day 3, 4, 5 and 6. From each of those we have to subtract the mean. So 3 minus 5 is minus 2, 4 minus 5 is minus 1, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 6 minus 5 is plus 1. Then we have to take that deviation squared. So minus 2 squared is 4, minus 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, and 1 squared is 1. We know the frequency of these measurements, the value 3 occurred once, the value 4 occurred three times, the value 5 occurred once and the value 6 occurred five times. So we multiply the uh, squared deviation by the frequency. 4 times 1 is 4, 1 times 3 is 3, 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 5 is 5. Now we can add all those up. The sum of the frequencies, 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 is 10. The sum of the products, 4 plus 3 plus 0 plus 5 is 12. Now we can apply the formula because the variance is the sum of the uh, products, which is 12, divided by the sum of the frequencies, which is 10. That gives us a variance of 1.2, as before, and a standard deviation, the square root of that, 1.1. So you see, the formula can be used to calculate the standard deviation from histogram data if we have the data in that form. So you see, calculating standard deviation is a little more complicated than calculating the mean, but really, if you apply the recipe or the formula step by step, 
it's not too difficult, particularly if you've got a calculator or a computer to help with the calculation. So that's the end of the fourth part of my lecture on descriptive statistics. Um, in the next part we'll do a worked example to give you a bit more practice at some of these calculations.